Welcome to part 3 of Let's Play Freeway Fighter by Ian Livingstone. At the end of the last part, I was on paragraph 63. Let's reread this paragraph as a reminder. Now, the canister bursts open and spreads iron spikes all over the road, but the Ford is equipped with a powerful underbody air jet which blows all but one of the iron spikes off the road. The only damage done is a slow puncture to one of its heavy-duty tyres, which slows it down just enough for you to accelerate out of range of its grenade launcher for the moment. Up ahead, you see the white house where you must turn around. You jam on the brakes and turn the steering wheel sharply to the left. You reverse back a few yards in a cloud of churned-up dust, and then slam the gear stick forward into first to race back to the finishing line. The Ford makes an equally swift U-turn and is soon just behind you. It powers alongside you and the driver pulls down on his steering wheel in order to sideswipe the interceptor. He looks set to determine the outcome of this duel by ramming. Yellow Ford, Firepower 8, Armor 16. A successful ram will reduce, the car, uh, will reduce a car's armor by two points. If you survive four attack rounds, turn to 334. Okay. Uh, so it's Yellow Ford. So let's put that on here. Yellow Ford. Uh, what was it? 816. Yeah, 816. 816. Actually, I'm being stupid, aren't I? It's armor, isn't it? Firepower and armor. So, yeah, it's after a bit of fire about here, don't I? Uh, whoops. Firepower eight and armor sixteen. Okay, right. Now, just one last thing. How do I do vehicle combat again? I forget. That's hand combat. Vehicle combat, there we go. Um, roll two dice, add the firepower to the roll, attack strength, yep. Then for you, whoever's hit, yep. Gets whatever. Yep, damage to vehicle. Roll one, oh yeah, roll one die and then deduct that from the armor score. Okay, good. Um, yeah, okay, so, so I've got it. So it's them, then me. All right, 63. Right, okay. So, roll for him. So, roll two dice, add it to his firepower. So that's 3 plus 8 is 11. I get 10. What's my firepower again? 10. No, sorry. 11. Um... Yep, so 11 plus 10, 21. So I, I win. I'll just put that down. Um, yeah, so 11 and 21. So I'm not with it today. Uh, then we roll a die, uh, to deter or one die, to determine the amount of damage or whatever. All right, so 2. So that does 2 damage. All right. That puts him down to 14. Don't forget, it's 4 attack rounds. Yeah, okay, what if it takes fewer than that? Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, I'm being stupid. Hold on. Yeah, it's a successful ram, so it only does two damage anyway, which is lucky, because that's a coincidence, it was two anyway, so I don't have to do the second die roll. It's only, it's always two. Yeah, sorry about that. I knew I was being stupid somewhere. Right, so let's do that again. So, eight plus eleven is nineteen, so that's nineteen, and I get... 19. So, 19 each. So, neither of us wins. There we go. So, nothing happens. Um, that's the second attack round. I need to survive four attack rounds. Uh, then we turn somewhere else. Okay. Um, what am I doing? Wait a minute. Yeah. Okay. So, this is the third attack round. So, 8 plus 7 is 15. Uh, 7 plus 11 is 18. So, 15 to 18. That means I win. There we go, and that puts him down to to 12 because it all automatically does two damage, doesn't it, to his armor? And that's the third attack round. Um, uh, yeah, so last one. So eight plus eight is 16. I get uh, 17. So 16 to 17. Uh, 
that puts him down to 10 and that's four attack rounds survived so that's that done let's remove the buzzing because it's annoying and let's go to 334 because we survived four attack rounds 334 here we go oh yeah of course and you can't destroy him because there's the maximum amount of damage you can do is is going to be eight isn't it and he has 16 so yeah so because he only does well one only does um two points of damage armor damage in per attack round maximum whatever it's impossible to do 16 so there's no way that you can defeat him so you have to survive four attack rounds in turn to 334 to proceed yeah that makes sense good okay there's probably uh, there is probably about five-eighths of a mile to go before you cross the finishing line and you are still locked in combat alongside the ford. Up ahead, the road, um, up ahead, comma, the road narrows to one lane to cross a stone bridge spanning a stream. If you wish to keep your accelerator pressed to the floor, turn to 35. If you would rather ease off the accelerator and allow the ford to take the lead, allow the ford to take the lead, turn to 239. We are going to keep the accelerator uh, press to the floor and turn to 35. Here we go. No point giving up our lead. Hubba hubba. Oh yeah, I said that last time, didn't I? But I'll say it again. Hubba hubba. Right, 35. It is a battle of nerves between you, not yourself, because that's a redundant reflexive. We've been through that before. So it is a battle of nerves between you and the driver of the Ford. No need for a reflexive pronoun there because uh, I won't go through it again, but there's no need for it. It should be you. It is a battle of nerves between you and the driver of the Ford. The, uh, the two cars race abreast towards the bridge. Roll one die and add the number to your skill, making a note of the total. Roll the die again and add the number to the four driver's skill of eight. If your total is the same as or greater than that of your opponent, turn to 379. If your total is less than that of the four driver, turn to 51. Okay, so we're rolling one die and adding it to our skill. So one die. Right, that's six. That was, that was a good one, wasn't it? So that's six, and that adds to our skill, which is... 10. His skill is 8, same as his firepower, so we get 16. So his skill is 8, and he gets 2 plus 8 is 10. So we win 16 to 10. So therefore, my or my skill is greater, because we need it to be greater. If your total is the same as or greater than that of your opponent, turn to 379. If it's less than that, turn to 51. So it's greater, so we turn to 379. Uh, yeah, 379, but one last time. Hubba hubba. Right, 379. I'll stop saying it now. And, and, uh, her face isn't that nice anyway, to be honest. Uh, which is what they call a butter face. You know, everything's nice but her face. Anyway, um, well, her face isn't that bad, to be honest, but you know, it's nothing worth shouting about. Anyway, um, when you are only a few yards from the bridge, the four driver's courage deserts him and he breaks hard, allowing you to cross ahead of him. Frustrated by your iron nerve, your opponent desperately tries to pass you before you cross the finishing line. The acceleration of the Ford is blistering because of its supercharger, and the cars are soon locked bumper to bumper. You see the finishing line ahead, no more than 200 yards away, and realise that the Ford will pull, will pull out of your slipstream any second now to pass you. You must block the Ford. Will you swerve to the left, turn to 20, or to the right, turn to 80? We are going to swerve to the left. So we are going to turn to 20. I mean, left or right, it's 50-50 here, and if you haven't done it before, then it's just a guess, but that's what it's all about. Suddenly the Ford swings out to the left to try to overtake, but you have anticipated the driver's move and block him successfully. Add one luck point. Let's do that. Yep, so that puts our luck up to ten. That's good. Um, you maintain your lead, and as you cross the finishing line, the interceptor is ahead of the Ford by half a car's length. You have won the blitz race. Turn to 111. Let's do that. Oops.
Uh, a small crowd of spectators gathers around the interceptor to congratulate you. The Ford driver climbs out of his car, slams the door shut, and stomps away. Looks like he's a bad loser, says one of the others, and it's the first time I've ever seen him lose. The girl who started the race hands you your prize of the can of petrol which you pack inside the interceptor. Okay, so we have another canister of petrol, so I'll just say fuel canister. Uh, petroleum distillate, petroleum spirit, or whatever it is, I don't know. Um, I think petrol is a brand name, to be honest. It's a bit like um, tannoy, or uh, what's the other one? Um, Tipex, for correction fluid. It's, it's a brand name, which sort of turned into a word. Although, although Tipex, or not, although neither Tipex nor tannoy has actually turned into a proper word, but petrol did. Although heroin was a brand name, heroin without an E for the uh, for, for diacetyl, diacetyl, whatever, morphine. That was a brand name, heroin. Um, but yeah, I think petrol was a brand name as well. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it was a brand name. Anyway, um, anyway, the girl who started the race hands you your prize of the can of petrol, which you pack inside the interceptor. It'll be about half an hour before the next race starts, so we're going to sit down over by the trees. Will you join us? She, she, will you join us? She says. You decline her offer as you are keen to carry on with your mission. Um, they walk away, leaving you to check over the interceptor for any serious damage. While you are bending over the engine, you feel a tap on the shoulder. You look up and see the tattooed man who was sitting on the wooden gate. Which gang did you say you belong to? He asks in a hostile... T I'll say that again. Which gang did you say you belong to? He asks in a hostile tone. Will you reply... Black cats, black rats, or black bats? <laughs> Alright, so we have to, a little bit of a memory thing here. Um, yeah, we said the, the black rats, if you remember. So, 156, here we go. The black rats... We ain't in no gang. I ain't your leader and this ain't no gang. Uh, that's a quote. If you can tell me which film that's from, uh, I'll be very, very impressed. I'll say it again. I ain't your leader and this ain't no gang. There we go. That's the quote. Right. Anyway, I thought that's what you said, but it's just that I've never heard of them before. I hope they aren't all as good at racing as you are. I expect I'll see you again. I'm going to join the others now, says the tattooed man. Much to your relief, he walks away, leaving you to drive off down the rough road to the main road where you turn right to head south. Send to 207. Yeah, so if you say anything else, it's, uh, it's trouble. Anyway, so 207, here we come. Okay, you flash past a handwritten sign which reads, Pete makes engine sweet, one mile to the left. Oh, we're doing miles again, good. Uh, you slow down as you approach a stone building with a corrugated iron workshop attached to it, which has the words, Spark Plug Pete's, painted on a billboard on top of the roof. There are a few cars parked on the forecourt. As you come to a halt, a thin pale man appears from the workshop, wearing an oily blue mechanics overall, and a baseball cap. He waves and says, Nice car. Pretty fast, I guess, but not as fast as old Pete can make it. If you are interested, I like payment in credits and goods. I'll do a good job for you. If you wish to stop to let the mechanic modify your engine, turn to 28. If you'd rather refuse his offer politely and continue your journey south, turn to 88. Okay, unfortunately, we are going to refuse his offer politely and continue our journey south, so turn to 88. Sorry, Pete, uh, but unfortunately the best thing to do is to, is to refuse. So, turn to 88. Um, excuse me a moment, I just have to make a phone call. Okay, sorry about that. Although, uh, for you, that well, was barely a second, wasn't it? But for me, that was uh, uh, more than 10 minutes. Um, while I was having that phone call or just before or after I was doing some thinking and you know what I am going to take his offer I'm going to let Pete um, let spark plug Pete um, improve my car so let's go to 28 yeah because um, you know he's trying to earn 
He's trying to earn an honest living, and I'm going to take him up on his offer. Let's go to 28. You know. Uh, you drive onto Pete's forecourt and park the interceptor inside the workshop. Pete quickly examines the engine and says that the acceleration of the interceptor could be improved by the addition of a supercharger. He tells you that the cost will be 100 credits plus some medicine. If you are able to and wish to give Pete 100 credits and two packs from your med kit, turn to 141. If you want to or have to decline his offer and carry on south, turn to 88. Yeah, let's do it. I have 200 credits because I got the wager back for the um, the, the Blitz race, whatever it is. So that puts us down to 100 credits. And then let's use two medical kits. That puts us down to 8. Okay, so that's that done. And let's turn to 141. Um, you settle down to relax in the shade while Pete busily sets to work on the engine. He taps and bangs away, whistling happily. Uh, you drift in and out of light sleep. Two hours later, he slams down the reinforced engine cover and says, OK, she's ready to roll. After giving Pete the 100 credits and two packs of medical supplies, you start up the interceptor and accelerate away as fast as possible. You can feel the extra acceleration in your back and smile contentedly. Pete has done a good job. Add one luck point and turn to 88. Good. Puts our luck up, as, uh, our luck up to 11. And we have a, I'll just mention in there we have a supercharger, so just put that in there. I'll make a new line. Supercharger. There we go. Thank you, Pete. Okay, uh, let's go to 88 then, where we were going to go originally. Okay. Nope, someone's, oh, that's a good idea. So 88 you know, if you're reading a book or one of these books, make sure that you write the paragraph number next to the paragraph number, just in case you don't know it's 88. But it's definitely 88 because they've written it next to it. Seriously. Uh, it is not long before the green vegetation gives way to more barren terrain, with tufts of dry grass dotted on top of the stony brown earth. You soon arrive at the edge of the desert, where the road is joined by another main road leading east. If you wish to turn left, turn to 177. If you'd rather keep going south, turn to 271. We are going to keep going south. Um, yep, yeah, turn to 271. He looks angry, the animal. Blimey. Okay. The landscape turns to a reddish brown as you drive further into the desert. The road runs south straight as an arrow and is virtually clear of abandoned cars. As you drive along, something you recognise catches your eye. It is an overturned interceptor which must have veered off the road and rolled over after its driver died at the wheel. If you wish to stop to see if there are any spares worth taking, turn to 166. If you'd rather keep on driving, turn to 13. Um, we're going to see if there are any spares worth taking. Turn to 166. There it is. Damn, I'm tired. Right, <laughs> anyway, enough of that. Um, there is one wheel in reasonable condition remaining on the interceptor. The tyre is flat, but can easily be inflated again with the can of flat you fix. It does not take long to remove the wheel and store it inside your own car. If you wish to look inside the crashed car, turn to 253. If you'd rather continue your journey south, turn to 13. Okay, so we have a spare tyre. Let's put that, so spare tyre. Whoops, uh, comma, there we are. Okay, we are going to look inside the crashed car and turn to crashed car and turn to 253. There we are. You pull open, I say it again, you pull open the driver's door and reach inside to open the glove compartment. Suddenly you hear a rattling sound and realise with horror that you have disturbed the nest of a rattlesnake. Um the snake strikes and bites your arm, emptying deadly poison into your veins. If you still possess a pack of medicine from your med kit, turn to two. Um, we do. 
If you have used up all the med kit supplies, turn to 357. So let's turn to 2. So you have 8 left. You run to your car and tear open a pack of medicine from your med kit. So let's, uh, this goes down to 7 then. Uh, you inject yourself with snake bite serum and dress the wound. However, the treatment does not increase your stamina. It merely prevents the poison from killing you. You recover some time later, but are, but, are never, but are nevertheless weakened by the ordeal. Lose one skill and two stamina points. Right, so stamina goes down to 31, and skill goes down to 9. Uh, you walk back to the overturned interceptor and shoot the snake with vengeful glee. <laughs> Inside the glove compartment you find a few yards of coiled plastic tubing which you decide to take with you. With your arms still throbbing painfully you drive off south again, turn to 13. So we have coiled plastic tubing. Let's write that down. Coiled plastic tubing. But what if he hadn't been plastic? Right, okay. Brownie points if you know where that comes from. Okay, um, 13. In your rear view mirror you see a motorbike and sidecar steadily closing up on you. The passenger is holding a machine gun mounted on the nose of the sidecar. He reminds you of early pilots with his goggles and a leather flying cap. Both men are wearing black scarves over their mouths to keep the wind-blown sand out of their lungs. When they are no more than 50 yards behind, they signal their intention by firing a burst from the machine gun at the interceptor. Lose one armor point. Puts us down to 27. Um, will you drop a canister of iron spikes if you have one, turn to 127, release a spray of oil if you still have a full canister, turn to 361, which is 19 squared, return fire with the interceptor's machine gun, turn to 282. Okay, there they are. Oops, skull and crossbones. Uh, looks pretty menacing. Brilliant. Um, okay. We are going to uh, release a spray of oil if you still have a full canister. So let's do that. Two cans of oil. Now we have two used. So that's that. We can't use any more of that. Um, and we're going to turn to 19 squared, 361. Oops. There we are. You press the release button, which empties the canister of oil in a thick spray over the road. The motorcycle combination runs over the oil at high speed and skids off the road. It rolls over in the sand and disappears from view as you drive away. Turn to 96. Uh, not going to say harbour harbour about that one. The miles roll by and the petrol gauge is reading almost empty again. If you are carrying a full can of petrol inside the interceptor, turn to 180. If you have not acquired one recently, turn to 264. Okay, we do have a fuel canister, so we're going to have to use this one as well. So I'll just say empty. Um, yep, yeah, turn to 180. Here we go. You stop the car and pour the contents of the can into the petrol tank. You know that you do not have enough fuel to reach San Anglo and wonder where you will find some more in this desert wilderness. It is a depressing thought which weighs on your mind as you set off again. Turn to 243. Hubba Hubba again. Right, blimey, lots of Hubba Hubbas here. 243. On the right-hand side of the road, you see an abandoned police car, half covered by a drift of sand. If you wish to stop to see if there is anything of use to you inside the car, 
turn to 109. If you would rather keep driving south, turn to 49. Okay, uh, we're going to keep driving south and turn to 49. Parked in the middle of the road ahead of you is a bizarre looking vehicle. It looks like a pickup truck which has been converted to resemble a Roman chariot. It even has scythes attached to its wheels. A huge bare chested man wearing a gladita gladiatorial let me say that again, wearing a gladiatorial helmet which covers his face is standing at the back of the truck holding onto a double barreled machine gun. He signals to his driver to drive forward into battle. You have no choice but to fight this new age gladiator. Chariot, firepower 9, armor 15. If you win this vehicle combat, turn to 91. He looks angry, doesn't he? Although where he found a gym and uh, lots of protein to work out with, I, I don't know. Or with which to work out. Um, anyway, so vehicle combat, uh, 9, 15. Um, Okay. Um, my notes suggest that we use a rocket, so let's use a rocket. Three. Now, what does a rocket um, do again? Oh, yeah, it kills it immediately, doesn't it? Let me just see. destroy any target. Okay, so we've used a rocket and that's destroyed it, so we don't even have to worry about anything. Yep, so we've used a rocket and that's the end of Mr. Mr. Chariot. So we don't have to worry about that. But I will just put him down on the, on the thing, because then... Whoops, I wonder what was happening. Because then, um... You know, then I know I've defeated it. Chariot skill, what was it? 9.15. So, firepower... nine and then fifteen was the stamina and now it's at naught so that's the end of that because we used a rocket I'll just say um, rocket a rocket to your heart right okay um, anyway turn to 91 so uh, sorry Mr. Gladiator but you didn't have a chance to show off your machine gun and your, and your big muscles there right okay you press on south as quickly as possible and switch on the radio, hoping to establish contact with San Anglo. However, no voices are audible above the crackling static. You decide to leave it on anyway in case somebody tries to make contact with you. After driving a further 15 miles... No, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. How many miles would that be? 15 times... What is it? A mu... Yeah, so... Yeah, so five eighths of that times 0 0.625 because that's five eighths, and we get 9.375. Um, what's that as a mixed number? Nine and three eighths miles. So I'll start that again. Um, can't remember what it was now. After driving a further nine and three eighths miles, uh, you come to another junction in the road. Somebody has left a sign there which reads "Engine and Body Repairs" in crude writing and shows an arrow pointing east. If you wish to turn left to head east, turn to 230. If you'd rather keep going south, turn to 301. Um, We are going to keep going south, turn to 301. After, oh, after the airs again, 30 times 5 eighths, 0.625. Okay, uh, what's that as a mixed number? There we go. Okay, um, after 18 and 3 quarters of a mile or so, the road suddenly ends. 18 and 3 quarter miles or so, the road suddenly ends. Road construction vehicles stand idle, left to the ravages of the desert heat and wind. There is no sign of life. The road along which you are driving was never finished before the catastrophe. Lose one luck point. So the luck we got for using Pete is now gone. Down to 10 again. 
Um, to your left, the terrain is flat and stony. To your right and straight ahead, there is nothing but sand. If you wish to head east across the stony ground, turn to 251. If you'd rather continue south across the sand, turn to 237. We're going to head east across the stony ground. So let's turn to 251. You check your compass to make sure you are heading directly east. The interceptor vibrates as it crosses the stony ground and suddenly you hear a loud bang. The interceptor becomes difficult to steer, the obvious sign of a flat tyre. You stop to inspect the damage and find that the tyre has blown and cannot be inflated by flat you fix. If you are carrying a spare wheel, turn to 223. If you do not have a spare wheel, turn to 343. Okay, so we have a spare wheel, which was the spare tyre we got earlier. Uh, that's the one it, I, I wrote down spare tire but I meant spare wheel anyway so we're going to use that so used that's the what that's what we meant um, anyway so we have a spare wheel and turn to 223 lucky we picked that up wasn't it you jack the car up and put on the spare wheel a few minutes later you are driving east again carefully trying to avoid start sharp stones, carefully trying to avoid sharp stones, I nearly said sharp shones, which would be a spoonerism. Anyway, so ca trying to avo carefully trying to avoid sharp stones. You drive for an hour across the bumpy terrain until you finally reach another road running north to south. You turn right onto it, grateful to be driving on a smooth road again. You pass an articulated truck which looks as it as if it has only recently been parked. If you wish to stop and examine the truck, turn to 104. If you'd rather drive on without stopping, turn to 118. Okay, we are going to decide what to do in the next part. So I'll just note down that we're on paragraph 223. Yep, 223, just in case I forget, which I won't, but just in case. Um, yeah, 223, and we will decide whether to stop and examine the truck, um, or, or lorry, or uh, driving on without stopping. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this part. I should be able to complete the book in the next part, because there's not much more to go now. So, yeah, that's pretty good. So thank you very much for watching, and goodbye.